Hallelujah. Lift your Bibles out. Let's make our confession of faith together. This is my Bible. It is the living word of God. Hallelujah. If you remain standing with me for just a moment, let me say, Bishop, what's the scripture we're going to turn to? Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. Everybody look at me. Uh, we, we started out this series, Soul Surgery, talking about grief. Say grief. grief. And uh, last week we talked about guilt. Say guilt. Yeah. One of the other things that can happen in the process of grief is something called rejection. And uh, today I want to, rather than giving you a scripture to paint the narrative for what we're going to be talking about today, I want you to watch this. You can be seated. Watch this. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, some business came up. I got a handle. So we're going to have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, cool. that's cool. Just for a couple of weeks. Mm, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little longer. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Look, I'll, I'll call you next week and we'll iron out the details, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, yeah. It was great seeing you, son. You too, Lou. Yeah. Yeah, um... I'm sorry, Will. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, it's all right to be angry. Hey, well, why should I be mad? I'm saying at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I... Hey, could you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm gonna be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty good at it too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a card. I ain't need him then, and I don't need him now. Will. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. And I sure don't need him for that, because ain't a thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? Do me a favor, do me a favor, look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, today's surgery is going to go deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you might as well just get ready. There's a box of tissue at the end of your aisle. You, you may need them today. So I know we're going to play a little musical chairs. I want you to stand back up because I want us to pray, and then I'm going to have you do something with your neighbor right quick. Just again, say, say, this is going to be good for me. Yeah, it's going to be good for me. We're going to get some stuff healed today. We're we going to get some stuff handled today. It's some, some anger some of you, you've been dealing with. You're going to get that handled today. It's some questions some of y'all been asking. We're going to get that handled today. It's some stuff you've not understood that you're going to get handled today. Somebody shout, I'm going to get it handled today. Stand up with me, and I want you to, let's pray. Father, we bless you, and we honor you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit today. And we just thank you for this great series today, Father. And we just ask that today you would uh, speak to us with clarity, that you would speak to us, Father, and break every chain that rejection has uh, attached to our souls today. And so today, Father, we celebrate you because we declare that this is going to be an atmosphere of freedom. I said this is going to be an atmosphere of freedom. 
And every young man or every grown man or every 85-year-old man that has ever felt rejected, today that's fallen off for him. And every woman and every girl and every young lady that's ever felt rejected, today that's going to fall off of them. Today we've come to make an announcement to rejection. You have tortured us for the last day. God, I wish I had a church full of faith. You have done your work for the last day because today the great physician called Jesus is stepping out of heaven and he's stepping into our souls and he's snatching rejection out of us. And if you believe that, I need you to shout like it's already done. I said shout like it's already done. We're pliable, we're open, we're ready. Holy Spirit, do what you do when you do how you do when you do what you do. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As you take your seats, I don't want you to high five your neighbor. I know you were getting ready to do it. I want you to hug your neighbor and I want you to tell them, say, you are accepted. Tell them you are accepted. You can be seated. I want to jump right into this today. Say soul surgery. Now, of course, we understand from this series that our soul is our mind, our thoughts, our will, and our emotions. And in this series, we've been talking about how often the people and situations are gone, but we're left to clean up the baggage that become, that's left from the experiences we have in life, and it becomes lodged in our soul. Say, my soul. Now, we started this series talking about grief, and uh, I want to take us another further in that today. Now, grief, we've learned, is our natural human response to loss, whether that's a real loss, an implied loss, or a perceived loss. Now, check this out. One of the things that can also cause grief is rejection. Say rejection. Now, so that your neighbor feels uh, like they're not the only one. Anybody in here ever been rejected? Okay, cool. So look at your neighbor and say, you are not alone. Look at the other one. Now, I hope you sit next to somebody you like because you're going to talk to them like 50, 11 times today. So if you don't like them, get up, go to the bathroom, come back and talk to somebody else. <laughs> Look at the other one and say, you are not by yourself. Watch this. When you are rejected by nouns, people, places, things, or ideas, it creates a loss of desired acceptance. Check this out. In the clip, in case you didn't know, that was from the uh, sitcom of the 90s, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We saw Will Smith not being able to understand why his father did not want him. It's a very troubling thing to be an individual that wants to be accepted and not understand why the very person place thing or idea that you want to be accepted by uh, doesn't want you has anybody ever been there can we be honest today it, it's interesting because actions can cause rejection uh, and words can cause rejection please understand actions uh, can create uh, concepts and thoughts and ideologies in your mind that make you feel rejected so now you're trying to process the loss of acceptance but the words that people speak can also cause rejection because you're trying to reconcile how is it that I, I want you to say things that affirm me and accept me yet you're saying things that are rejected me has anybody ever experienced that's why you need to be careful. Let me parenthetically insert this here. What you say to people, because the scripture says in Matthew 12, 36, that you've got to give an account for every idle word that you speak. There's some stuff that you said to people hoping that you were just going to just let it slide and it was just going to be pushed under the carpet. But the truth is, is that somebody said something to you 40 years ago and you still sitting up dealing with it. Uh, somebody said something to you years and years ago and you're still sitting up trying to process. Well, why did they say that? And what did they they mean by that and every time you try to step forward you hear the words of rejection playing through your mind and you hear the words of rejection playing through your soul am I talking to anybody you trying to go forward in your business but you hear rejection from years ago you're trying to go forward with your life but you hear the words of rejection but I got an announcement for somebody today about the time this word is finished today whatever rejection has been doing to torture you it's gonna be done today I wish I had a church full of faith that would say today it ends today you're still processing stuff decades later that people said to you, they're dead, they're gone, they're six feet under, but you're still processing. They said you weren't this, and they said you weren't that, and they said you weren't going to be nothing, and they said you're going to be just like your mama or your mammy, or they said you're going to be just like your daddy, and you're sitting here grown trying to figure out why it looks like what they said is true. Rejection, rejection. Anybody ever 
ever dealt with rejection. And now watch this. When you feel rejected, often your mind will process it as grief. So now check this out. When you feel rejected, now you go through the categories of the symptoms as, uh, uh, of grief. Watch this. Now remember, we talked about this every week so far. Physical symptoms of grief. Disturbance in your sleep patterns. You can't sleep because you feel rejected. Fatigue. You're tired because you feel rejected. Restlessness, nausea, pain, and tension in the body, decreased immune system. You, you keep getting sick because you got a rejection problem and, and, and you thought it was a germ problem. <laughs> Difficulty in stopping activity, inactivity, unusual clumsiness, uh, uh, clumsiness, emotional symptoms of grief, crying, sadness, fear, anxiety, numbness, emptiness, loneliness, anger. That's, that's what you saw in the clip with Will is that once he felt rejected, he immediately now got angry. And when he got angry, he immediately began to try to justify his position of anger. And so watch this. We're going to get into it in a moment. So he immediately starts trying to build a wall so that the hurt will stop, not realizing that, watch this, he didn't wall the hurt out. He walled it in. You didn't hear what I just said. There's some stuff that you think that you're building a wall and you're going to keep hurt away from you. And really what you're doing is you're keeping it in. And you wonder why every day you get up, you keep processing it over and over and over and over again. It's because you locked the hurt in when you should have been putting it out. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You locked the rejection in when you should have been kicking it out. Touch your neighbor and say, you're not alone. You're not alone. What was this? Uh, helplessness, a sense of helplessness, feeling irritable, a sense of observing yourself, guilt, reduced confidence, lowered self-esteem, loss of interest in previously, previously enjoyed activities. All those are the emotional symptoms of grief. Grief can happen as a result of rejection. You still here? Cognitive manifestations of grief in your mind, slow thinking or processing, difficulty making simple decisions. You know why it's real hard for somebody you know, not you, maybe not even your neighbor, it's the person behind you, they sit behind you. Uh, you know why it's so difficult for them to make simple decisions? It's because they fear rejection from making any decision. They're scared to do anything because they don't want anybody to feel rejected. And they're scared of being rejected. Okay, it's quiet in this church. It's, I wish I had a church that, that wanted the truth. I, I would. Don't nobody want to hear this today? Okay, listen, you just keep on praying, and you just keep on fasting, and Jesus is going to take you to high places. Amen. Because while y'all ain't shouting, they call, it's cities calling that want to hear it like this. So y'all, should I preach? Can I preach? Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening. All right, watch this. <laughs> Y'all still here? Okay. Cognitive manifestations, slow thinking or processing, difficulty making simple decisions. Simple decisions. Simple de you ruminate over simple decisions. Did I move my couch over there over here? you four weeks in trying to decide whether or not you go move a couch. Uh, Mental confusion, false daydreams, or flashbacks. You say, it was so good back then. <laughs> really, Tina, it was. Last name, Turner. It's quiet in the church. Spiritual manifestations of grief. A sense of distance from God, feeling angry at God. Isolating yourself from church. Social manifestations of grief. Isolation and withdrawal. Preoccupation with your own feelings and excluding others. And uh, relationship stress. All kind of relationship stress. Every relationship you got is stress. Your relationship with you is stress. <laughs> you wake up in the morning mad at yourself. What you doing? <laughs> Y'all here? So check this out. All of this happens as a result of rejection because rejection creates loss. Loss then has to be processed through grief. So now watch this. Because of rejection, you go through the stages of grief. Y'all should know them by now because we've been over them every week in this series. Denial. You deny you were rejected. You know why? Because pride doesn't want you to feel that vulnerable. So no, I, I wasn't. I didn't care. Did you see what Will did? Will was like, I don't need him. I don't care. And then quickly you go into anger. Now you're mad. Who do they think they are? Rejecting me. Talking to me like that. You don't know now. I... All my life I had to fight. You... <laughs> then the third stage, third stage, bargaining. Well, maybe they rejected me because. Well, you know what? Maybe if I had done this, they wouldn't have done that. 
Then you go through depression. Now you're depressed about it. You, you saw Will get through stages one through four in a minute clip. Because all of a sudden now he's depressed. And he asked a question. That question was so powerful. He says, why he don't want me? That's what he said. I know it's not good English. Why, why, why doesn't he want me? What, what, what's wrong with me? Am I so messed up and jacked up? Look, we matched it. I didn't even know. Am I so messed up and jacked up? Maybe nobody's ever going to want me. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe I am just, just, maybe I'm, maybe I'm poison. <laughs> then you go to acceptance. Now, now watch this, watch this. I, I, I need to give you, I need to give you, there's only two points today. There's only two points today, but, but they're fairly uh, big points. So the first thing is rejection is a part of life. Rejection is a part of life. If you study the Bible, you find that all throughout the scripture, people dealt with rejection. Very spiritual people dealt with a very psychological issue of rejection. I want to submit to you that you can be very spiritual, but you can still not be very psychologically stable. You can pray a lot, but have a lot of mind problems. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You can praise and worship a lot, but still have a lot of mind stuff that you're trying to work through. You can shout and say Mitsubishi Subaru and Honda, but still have a lot of soul issues that you're working out. Adam dealt with rejection. Check this out. Adam disobeys God, and his fear that God's going to reject him makes him deflect responsibility. Now check this out. Adam is the Teshelem, is the image and likeness of God in the earth. He's a son. The people understand. The angels, the most they could ever be, were servants. Adam was the first God created that was a son. Did you get that? The most the angels can do is carry out directives. But Adam now was entitled to everything that was his daddy's. But check this out. He disobeys God. God's like, hey, Adam, listen. Leave the tree that's in the midst of the garden alone. Now, if you came to Bible college, you'd know what was really going on. He said, leave it alone. Don't touch it. Let that alone. Doesn't even say let that alone. Of course, Scripture says, now check this out. Eve wasn't there when Adam was given that directive. He wasn't created yet. So then we have to assume by deductive logic that Adam told Eve, listen, God said, don't mess with this. Check it out. Now, they, they go on. They disobey God. The scripture says, and she gave to her husband that was with her, which means Adam was standing there watching her disobey what he knew God said. Then he decided to partake in the disobedience. Uh, see, you got to be careful what you allow around you because the scripture says you're guilty of the same. See, parents, there's some stuff you need to tell your kids, no, as for me and my house, that's not going down up in here. You want to do that? Yeah, yeah. Get your own Excel account, get your own AT&T account, and get your own rent. But if you're going to be up in here, as for me and my house, because if I allow it, I'm guilty of the same. So watch this now, watch this now. So Adam is there, and he does it. And check this out. Now, all of a sudden, he's grieving. Bishop, why is he grieving? He's grieving because he lost his status as a son in his mind. Shaka basha. In his mind, now, he never knew what it was like to not be in perfect union with his daddy. And so now his actions have separated the union. And so now he's lost that connection. But watch this. He thought now that God was going to respond to him out of anger. So check this out. Adam's there. Adam's there, and the scripture says, and now the Lord comes down. Now, could you imagine, I mean, we're not talking about the omnipresence of God. We're talking about the glory of God, the kabat, the manifested presence of God. And he comes and he walks with Adam. He had been walking with Adam because he was raising Adam, you see. Uh, they'd been walking in the cool of the day. And so he comes down for another one of their afternoon lunches. And God's like, where's Adam? Now, please understand, when God asks questions, y'all, he's not asking to find information out. He's like, Adam, where are you? Huh? Huh? Oh, we going to lunch? Oh, today? Oh, I, oh. oh, I didn't know we were going every day. Like, what else were you going to do? 
So he's like, he's like, okay, God, um, what's going on? Uh, 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 huh? What's, what's happening? He's like, uh, well, Adam responds. He's like, listen, um, we, um, we found out we were naked. Right, I know, craziest thing happened the other day. <laughs> Both of us didn't have no clothes on. Why you didn't tell us, God? So we decided we were going to go make some fig leaves. Now, check this out. Fig leaves didn't represent clothes. Fig leaves represent a lack of transparency. Watch this now. A lack of the ability to be honest because of a fear of rejection. They said, so we shielded ourselves so that we would reject one another. <laughs> you follow. And so uh, they go on, and then uh, God's like, whoa, wait a minute. Check this out. God's response is, who told you you were naked? God said, I didn't tell you that, so I'm trying to figure out why you're having conversations with folk that don't know nothing. Your neighbor would save a lot of drama if they stopped talking to know nothing know-it-alls. God said, who told you that you were naked? He said, I tell you what, did you eat from the tree in which I commanded that you should not eat? That's a yes or no question. And all Adam had to do was say, yes, Lord, please forgive me. I didn't mean to. I apologize. I apologize. He could have called Anita and be like, Anita, will you sing to the Lord for me this song? I apologize. Believe me, I do. <laughs> oh, this is Denver. Anita Baker, she's a, uh... I forgot for y'all. Please forgive me. You know what he does? You know what he does? Immediately, he fears God rejecting him. He didn't, watch this though, he didn't even have a concept of rejection because he's the first son. So his disobedience, watch this, creates a cognitive perception of rejection. Okay, y'all missed it. How did he learn rejection? He's the first. His disobedience created the thought of it. Okay. You, you ever seen somebody do something wrong and they start acting weird with you? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Parents, maybe you had this happen. They ain't done something wrong, but they acting weird with you? Okay, y'all ain't going to say that to me. Your friend was the one talking to your enemy and they acting weird with you? Like, what are you doing? Because now watch this. We learned last week because there's guilt. So anyway, here's what he does. He says, the woman you gave me to be with. In other words, he was like, I'm not taking any responsibility for that. You know, he's like a lot of church folk. I'm not taking responsibility for nothing. It's bishop. <laughs> it's the ushers. <laughs> it's the greeters. The parking lot people. The bookstore folk. And then you know what the woman does? She's like, well, you ain't finna get me rejected. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Watch this. And because the devil, watch this, Hasetan, the adversary, because he's an angel, he already knew God wouldn't finna sit up and tolerate that kind of answer. So he doesn't even bother trying to say, well, Lord, wait a minute now. He's like, I did it. <laughs> it was me. Got it? He feared rejection. Watch this. So he lost everything. Say rejection is a part of life. Leah felt rejected. Now, can, can I go in right here about Leah? You, you know Leah, because Leah, Leah, Leah's daddy was who? <laughs> now, y'all are Harvest Christian Center. Now, this ain't nowhere else, so y'all should know that. Oh, Jesus. Sunday school starts next week, and it's mandatory. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know about this. Okay. Who was Leah's daddy, y'all? Laban, thank you. Now, check this out. Laban uh, 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 had a relative who he made work for, for him. Because the relative really wanted who? Rachel. Why did he really want Rachel? She was cute. <laughs> Why didn't he want Leah? He wasn't sure who she was looking at. No, that's the Bible. No, don't, don't start then with me. It's the Bible. Bible says her eyes were delicate. 
So he was like, hey, baby, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. He was like, well, I'm over here. I'm over here. <laughs> now check this out. Laban. <laughs> thought this was a Christian church. Laban. <coughs> Laban says, he says, I want you to work for me. And I'm going to give you Rachel. But you got to work for me. You're going to earn her. Ooh, I could say something right there. Single ladies, let him work for you. Don't be so cheap. You know what we do with cheap stuff? We treat it like it's cheap. I ain't treating no Toyota like a Rolls Royce. You're out your mind. So if you want to attract a higher quality man, why don't you raise your value? Stop being so cheap and easy. Okay, but that ain't what I'm preaching about. But watch this. I didn't say that. I just know why I can't find a godly man. Because you're on the dollar menu. That's why. And godly men don't buy off the dollar menu. That's why. Punks buy off the dollar menu. But if you want a man of God, he wants the combo. P31, the combo. Come on now, be a good church. Bishop, he said, I'm cute, so we get married. You cheat. That's what you hear. You cheat. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I'm all off subject today. I should have started with a script. I could have did it regular. Started with video. Forgive me. So check this out. Laban's like, you're going to earn her because she's worth the wait. You ain't touching her for seven years because she's worth the wait. And if you can't wait on her, then you don't want her bad enough. And if you can't earn her, you don't want her bad enough. And if you can't jump through the hoops I set because I'm her daddy, then you don't want her bad enough. And if you don't want her, rest assured, partner, it's another to do. <laughs> you ain't hearing what I'm saying. Now, fellas, I know the ladies are shouting. No, it's okay. I'm an equal opportunity rebuker, so I'm going to come right back around in this corner right now. The man going to be shouting in just a moment. Equal opportunity. We don't discriminate here, you understand. He's like, you're going to earn her. I got to move because I'm only in point one. So watch this. He's like, you're going to earn her. So he works for seven years. And you know what Laban does? Laban pulls one of Jacob's on Jacob. Laban's like... He gives her Leah, which is the oldest daughter, which was Hebrew tradition. She's like, you take Leah. Now, Jacob didn't find out it was Leah until he was getting to know her. After the ceremony, he, he wanted to get to know her. You understand? And uh, uh, when he wanted to get to know her, he's like, wait a minute. Open your eyes. <laughs> you ain't Rachel. So he goes back to Laban. Laban, how could you trick me? I wanted Rachel. Laban was like, oh, for real? <laughs> oh, uh, well, you know, the tradition is we give the older one first. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you want Rachel, you're going to have to work again. Now, you can keep Leah, though. No, here, here's the point. Imagine being Leah. Your daddy don't want you. And your husband only wants you for your body. That's rejection. <laughs> her father didn't want her and her husband didn't really want more for her than sex. Who, who does she have to go to? She couldn't talk, watch this, she, she, she couldn't talk to Rachel because Rachel was seen as her enemy at that time. She couldn't talk to the children she had because they were babies. And check this out, Leah thinks to herself, well, if I start having some children, maybe things will change. Sure. The scripture even says that she begins to drug a Jacob with mandrakes, which were like uh, the current day equivalent of methamphetamines, to seduce him to love her more. The crazy things that we do to try to get accepted. And it's amazing because sometimes you want to be accepted by stuff that if you really took some time to look at it, you'd realize, why in the, mm, do I want to be accepted by that anyhow? 
And what was sad, she starts having children in hopes to please her husband and hopes that he's going to begin to love her. And so watch this, because the children were born for the wrong reasons. We find out from scripture that the children begin to fight each other for thousands of years later. Can I take you another further? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. What's even sadder is that when we study the story of Rachel, we read that the scripture doesn't ever record that anything changed between her and her husband. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Check this out. Now, watch this. When you are rejected by people, your womb can open and you then begin to choose what you bear. The scripture says that the Lord allowed her womb to be opened. So now she chose what it was that she would bear as a result of her womb be open, being open. What, what, what's this? Can, can y'all stay with me for just a moment? Uh, when you experience rejection, you begin to birth things, watch this, out of rejection. So inadvertently, you begin to attract people that are familiar with the womb of rejection. You attract rejected friends and then y'all both try to reject one another first. You attract rejected spouses and dating and this and that. And then y'all both sitting up trying to reject one another because they know your womb. They know your womb because they got the same womb. And contrary to popular belief, sometimes it's not opposites that attract. Sometimes it's the same thing that attracts. Rejected folk find other rejected folk and start a rejected club. Okay. So Leah began, can I, can I take you another further? Because Leah, Leah's going to rock your world. See, Leah's going to rock your world. Leah's children now are her character traits that she births out. <laughs> now, you ready to hear about her children? I got to move quickly because I'm still in the first point. Reuben. Reuben was the first son of Jacob. What, what says, he represented her calling on the name of the Lord in this affliction. She was afflicted, the scripture says, because she was unloved by her husband. And the truth is she was rejected by her father. So the only concept she has of men in her life is that they don't want me. God, if I had time, I'd work that real tough, but I don't. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Reuben represents, listen, the things we do that aren't in our nature in hopes that we'll be received and accepted by people. Let me give you an example. You don't cuss naturally, but because you want to be accepted by the folk you're around, you slip in a few words so that the people around you feel more comfortable. Go on and preach for them, and I will. Uh huh. You ain't naturally thuggish, mm -hmm, but you act a little thuggish when you get around certain folk because you want to be accepted by them. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You ain't naturally a gossip, but when you get around other gossipers, you start throwing a little bit. Did you know him? Did you know in? Because you hope to be accepted by the very dis. Okay. 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 I. Right. Y'all here? Reuben represents compromise and a hatred for the way she was made, thinking that if she had been different, maybe she would be accepted. Second son she has is Simeon. Simeon is a victim's mentality. After you've been rejected for so long, you'll start thinking and acting like a victim. Well, God, if you love me, why am I going through this? Why me? What did I ever do to deserve this? It's a victim's mentality. You met people who think like victims. Everything that ever happens in the world is always an injustice against them. The government's against them. God's against them. They mama them against them. They job is against them. It ain't never nothing they do. It's a conspiracy against them. They convince. They look in their rearview mirror. What you looking at? Somebody behind me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. The, the next son she has is Levi. Levi, uh, it means, not, in the Hebrew, it means attachment. Check this out. Levi is dangerous because it's attachment to people for the wrong reasons. You begin to get attached to people so that you end up sucking the life out of them, and this is the way that you end up running many people away from you. You become leechy. Okay, all right, so let me give you an example. I'm, I'm okay, see, fellas, not terms of equal opportunity rebuke, so I'm finna get the women. Watch this. Uh, some of them. Watch this. So the first man that says, You're beautiful. Lord, thank you for my husband. Leechy. How you even claiming that? Why would you claim that? You don't even know what you're dealing with. Why would you thank God for something and you don't even know what you're dealing with? Baby, I ain't never met nobody like you. Oh, hallelujah. What? <laughs> and 
Ain't that something, fellas? Did y'all see how they just totally, ain't nobody said, preach, preach. ain't nobody said nothing. They just like, you need to move on. <laughs> ain't studying y'all. You get attached to people for the wrong reasons. Often you'll get attached to the thing that's making you crazy. And you'll love it when the thing is not around, but then you'll want the thing to be around because you got an illegitimate Levi. You're attached illegitimately. And so I don't like you when you're here, but I don't like it when you're gone because I'm attached to your dysfunction and your dysfunction somehow makes me feel functional. And I can't understand it because I, nobody ever told me I was dealing with rejection. This also represents manipulation. You'll begin telling people false things so that they'll accept you because you got an attachment. You just start making up stuff. So you know somebody wants, you know, wants to hear you say X and say, oh, yeah, I have to X. Don't know X, ain't met X, ain't never seen X, been around X, but now you claim an X. But then she had a fourth child. The fourth was Judah. Judah, finally Leo was like, okay, these children ain't working. Having babies ain't making him love me no more. Rachel is what he wants, and that's what he wants. So finally with Judah, she says, I'm just going to praise the Lord. She said, because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of feeling sorry for myself. And so, Father, thank you for my enemies. Thank you for my hell. Thank you for those that hated me. Thank you for my crazy mama. Thank you for my crazy, Lord, just thank you. I just say thank you because finally she said, okay, I, I'm not going to beat rejection by trying to manipulate him. That's Leah. Children of Israel dealt with rejection. We're just, we're just talking about how rejection is a part of life. Children of Israel dealt with rejection. Check this out. For 430 years, they're slaves, which means when they come out of Egypt, check this out. Can I give you some revelation about the children of Israel? The children of Israel come out of 430 years of bondage, and overnight, they are made wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. Check this out, which means the promise wasn't the money. God made them rich overnight and then said, now go to the promised land. Can I submit to you that you keep thinking if I just had that or if I just had that or if I just had that. God says, what you don't understand is I can give you that overnight. The promise is bigger than a thing or some money. The they were made rich overnight and then he said, go to the promise. They go, they get close to the promised land. They're like, Lord, let us send some spies. God originally, check this out, didn't want them to send spies because he knew what they were going to do. But God says, fine, I'll oblige you and I'll let you send them, but I want you to know that's not really what I want to do because I already know how y'all finna act. Parents, you ever had to give your children the talk before you go into a store? Let me talk to you this side of the church because this side ain't saying nothing to me. You ever had to give them that talk? Now listen. Now we finna go into the bullseye store. <laughs> it's a new store, it's Prince, Target. Don't touch nothing. Don't put nothing in that basket. Anybody parents ever had to do that? Maybe you haven't had to do it. Did you ever have it done to you? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, now, check this out. Check this out. God was trying to give them the talk. God was like, listen, I already know how y'all are going to do, so I'm really not excited about that idea, but fine. Send spies. You know the story. They send 12 spies, and these are 12 leaders. They are elders of the tribes of Israel. They are leaders, which means they should have had the heart of Moses, which means you can be around something and not be like it. Stop thinking that just because you are around good that you're going to be good. Stop just thinking, because, well, if I can just get close to Jesus, I'm going to be like Jesus. You a lie. Judas walked with Jesus for three and a half years and was nothing like him. Proximity does not mean adaptation. He was around. He, they were around Moses, but they were nothing like him. And so they go out. So ten of the spies come back. We can't take the land. Let us go back to Egypt. Because at least we knew what to expect in Egypt. I can't move out of certain zip codes. because Okay, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all better say amen or I'll call them out. You better say amen. You better say something to me. 
I, I can't do that. Massa might come get us. And Massa might sell us tomorrow. Ten of them come back and say, we can't take the lamb. He said, the land is great. Look, this is its fruit. They had to get two dudes to carry the fruit. They had to get two big old Zeus looking dudes to carry the fruit. And I'm like, listen, this, this, is a, this is incredible. This is great. It's everything you said it was going to be, but we can't have it. We can't do that. How are we going to do that? I didn't go to college. I can't do that. I didn't graduate high school. How am I going to do that? Come on, don't act like you ain't heard people say that stuff. Or maybe you've said it to yourself. I made too many mistakes. I can't have this quality of life. I messed my credit up. I can't do that. I messed this up. I can't do that. Oh, but then you better stop serving Jesus because the Jesus we serve says, I don't care what your yesterday was. I'll give you another opportunity and I'll give you another chance. Not because you deserve one, but because of grace and because of mercy ten of the spies ten of the spies say we can't do it two of them Joshua and Caleb are like yes we can and they got angry they got indignant about it they were like wait wait a minute wait a minute you need to just hold up now <laughs> now I'm closest to Moses so I get to talk first check this out and you know why they said they couldn't they said we can't do it because we're like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we are in their sight they had been rejected for so long they had gotten so used to their prayers seemingly not being answered they had gotten so used to seeing average and seeing mediocre that the thought that they could be more than that they rejected it and they watch this now and so they rejected themselves from having what God had accepted them for You spiritual, but your neighbor's sitting up dealing with stuff that God says, do they know that I accept them? Do they know that I have already approved them for something greater than what they're experiencing? But their rejection, watch this, made them preemptively reject. You're still here. So the scripture says, in Numbers 13, you can look it up for yourself. God was like, listen, do it, do it, y'all can do it, y'all can do it. Eventually, God's like, okay, you want to feel rejection? God says, this day, you're going to know my rejection. He said, because everything you said I was going to do to you, you said it wasn't going to work. You said you're going to die in the wilderness. He said, you're right about it. I agree with you. It's dangerous when God agrees with you. And what you're saying is crazy. God was like, fine, I agree with you. You said it ain't going to work for you? Fine, I agree. You said nothing ever happens good for you? Fine, I agree. You said you was just going to die miserable? I agree. You said you was just going to be messed up? I agree. God says, you'll know my rejection because I'm going to agree with your dysfunction. He dealt with rejection. Y'all still here? Uh -huh. David was rejected, and here it is. I'm still on point one. I'm going to move in a moment. David was rejected. David's rejection is very interesting because it's like the clip we looked at. He was rejected by his father, Jesse, in 1 Samuel 16. When David was a teenager, Samuel, the man of God, came to his house to anoint a new king to replace the incumbent king named Saul. Now, Jesse presents all of his sons to David. Or, excuse me, to Samuel. Well, wait a minute. That's not true. He presented all of them except David. He presented the sons he accepted to Samuel but the son he rejected he left out in the field with the sheep okay 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 touch your neighbor say say the scalpel's coming the scalpel's coming because we got to go deep so we can pull that thing up out of you so you stop rejecting the stuff that God is trying to do for you watch this watch this watch this there was an eighth son his name was David but Jesse didn't even think that David belonged in front of the man of God the man of God the man of God <laughs> That's church talk for man of God, but you got to put a D on it, man of God. Look at me, y'all. Just imagine how David felt <coughs> knowing that his other brothers were perceived to be good enough, but he wasn't even invited into the house. Could you imagine a party going on? The man of God shows up, and in those days, they honored and respected men of God. So uh, when, when, when Samuel came up, Samuel came with all of the other prophets and came with his entourage and they came and it was a big deal. I mean, they, 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 they brought out the fine china. They put on their, you know, 
their Sunday's best, you understand? They went to Sears and everybody got a new outfit. You follow what I'm saying? I mean, this was, this was a big deal. The man of God is coming to our house and he's, we don't know what he's coming for, but we just know it's going to be great because the man of God is here. Whenever God sends a man of God to your house, you better know it's a big deal. And so they respect and honor. And so David's just looking at the house, had his iPod on. He was, he was cleaning up sheep dung. He was cleaning his sheep. He was just, you know, he was writing a song. I will bless the Lord. Oh. Y'all owe David's all kind of royalty because David had wrote so many songs. And so, and, so, and so he's got his iPod on. He's, he's out there doing that. He looks up at the house. What are they doing? And he's like, wait a minute. That's, that's the man of God. Who, who, oh, what are they doing? Oh, okay. Well, I'll bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall continue to be in my mouth. But imagine what the little boy in him felt like. Why didn't daddy even invite me to the house? Why couldn't I come in? I mean, I, I, could I, why could, I couldn't even shake his hand. He feels rejected. Here's the deal. The crazy part is the Bible, are y'all still here? The Bible doesn't even record that David ever asked his father why, but you have to know he wondered why. You know how I know he wondered why? Because we wonder why. And sometimes the why matters, and sometimes the truth is the why doesn't. In David's case, check this out, the why didn't matter because the scripture has now hidden uh, 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 something that was there that was for David's protection. See, Jesse, David's father's name, meant God's gift, which meant God said, I've concealed in the name of David's father that the rejection that was perpetrated against David was a gift. So I didn't let David ask because it was a gift. And there's some of y'all sitting up saying, why didn't my daddy walk me and why did he walk out? I could be sitting next to the joker in church now and not even know. You better understand, that was Jesse. That was God's gift. God was protecting you. And tell your neighbor to fix their face because there's some faces I ain't liking. Say God's gift. Sometimes rejection is protection. Sometimes rejection is divine direction. Jesse was insufficient of a man to raise a king. You didn't hear what I just said. So the reason God said, I'm going to let Jesse reject you is because he ain't got what it takes anyhow to raise the next king of Israel. And since God has made you a king and God has made you a priest, Whoever rejected you was insufficient to handle you. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Jesse's rejection of David was really a gift to David. But nobody showed David how to man handle that rejection. You still here? The Bible calls King David a man after God's own heart. Say so he was spiritual, but he struggled with rejection. He prayed, he fasted, he fasted, he prayed, he read his Bible, he read as a Hebrew boy, he read his Torah, he did everything he was supposed to do as a little Hebrew boy. But do you understand that it's for all of his spirituality, he still had this area of his carnality that it just never ever lined up. He was spiritual, he prayed, but he still struggled with rejection. You still here? And I know what some of you are thinking, well just receive the acceptance of Jesus. And that's true. And you do need to do that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the truth be told is sometimes the wounds that other humans leave are wounds that are deep. Anybody know something about deep wounds? They're deep wounds. Because it'll replay. It's like a DVD. You ever put a DVD in and, and forgot you put it in and the little menu keeps replaying? Check this out. And you get sick of it because you can hear it from the kitchen or the other room you walk into, but you just let it keep playing. That's what rejection, that's what rejection is. It just keeps playing and playing and, and you're sick of it, but you just let it keep playing and playing and playing. But today I got an announcement for the DVD that's been playing in your life. Today we're going to hit the stop button. We ain't hitting pause. We hitting stop. What's this? What's this? Because he's rejected, he struggles with rejection all of his life. So he starts doing things that don't work, but he keeps doing them as if they do. 
we know David had a, a sexual addiction. <laughs> he, uh, he figured, well, I'm just, you know, I'll get another and another and another. And maybe, no, she's real cute, so I'm, she going to work. And then I'm going to get her, and then I'm going to get her, and then I'm going to get her, and then I'm going to get that and this and that, and that but none of it worked. Because for every midnight excursion David had, he still never heard his daddy say, come in the house. So he's trying to get from these women what these women can never, ever give him. You're trying to get from that bottle what it can never, ever give you. You're trying to get from all of these folk you call friends, which are really pole bears because they ain't armor bears, what they can never, ever give you. You still here? <laughs> Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. I guess your anesthesia is pretty tough today. Uh, David Ruffin, I, I like watching biographies. And because uh, I like looking, people say, you've heard me say this a million times, people say that experience is the best teacher. And that's not true. Other people's experience is, because all I got to do is read about it or watch it. <laughs> it costs them millions of dollars. It costs me 20 minutes. And uh, David Ruffin, David Ruffin was, a, uh, uh, was an old school R&B. Uh, uh, R anybody know, uh, walk away from love? Gonna walk away, gonna walk away, gonna walk away. Listen. It's not that I don't love you. Okay, anyway, so y'all don't know about that. Okay, anyway, so, uh, but, 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 but David Ruffin, uh, this, his wife made a comment. She said, no amount of drugs, no amount of woman, no amount of fame could ever give him what his father didn't. So, so she was telling a story about how David Ruffin spent his whole life trying to get these things and prove something to a man he didn't even know. You still here? Since we're talking about King David, I figured I'd use another David. So now watch this. Then David, not only does he have this addiction, but now he, he, he starts kind of becoming a little bit of a womanizer. That's what happened with Bathsheba. See, a lot of people like to preach Bathsheba and say Bathsheba was wrong because he was taking a bath, on, a bath on top of the house. Hey, look at me. Every woman in those days took a bath on top of the house. You know why? It's simple physics. Water goes down. If you take a bath at the bottom of your house, hope you on a hill so you can drain that water out. <laughs> and look, David said, saw, look, there's a scripture. Y'all doing real good back there. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. He said, she look all right. She going to be the one that's going to make me feel accepted. You hear? Rejected people often take advantage of other people so they become what it is they hate. You ever said to yourself, don't raise your hand because this is going to be kind of emotional. I know. You ever said to yourself, I don't want to be anything like blank. And then you started looking at yourself and you were like, I'm acting just like blank. And you ever had to have just where you just, you, you stop talking about it to yourself because you're like, let me shut up because if I talk anymore about it, I'm going to get more confused about it. So let me just. David then becomes, now remember, this is a spiritual man. This is a man that prays. This is a man that worships. This is a man that fasts. This is a man that loves God. He becomes a deceiver. He sets up Bathsheba's husband, whose name was Uriah, to be murdered. Watch this. Rejected people often turn on those that love them the most. Because they're figuring, one day soon, you're going to reject me. So... I bet I'll get you first. One day you're going to turn on me. I know it. Because everybody else did. And before you do it, I bet you I'll get you first. That's how rejection works. That's how rejection works. It's quite, it's, 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 it's quite, it's quite the thief. Now check this out. Uh, uh, David would have had, rather lived with the guilt of being responsible for Uriah's death than if have dealt with Uriah's rejection of him for who he really was. So Uriah was one of David's mighty men. He, he fought in David's army. So, so, so David knew, okay, Uriah, he, you know, I can count on him. Check this out. I can count on him. Check this out. I can count on him, but I betrayed him. 
I did to him what I didn't want anybody to ever do to me. And I don't want him to know that that's who I really am. So rather than just having a conversation with him and saying, I apologize, I'm going to kill him. Wow. See, watch this. That, that's why some people that were your greatest allies become your greatest enemies. It's because what you don't know is that they've done something to betray you. And so before they're like the mafia. Before they'll tell you the truth, they'll just kill you. That's too heavy for this. Okay, fine. Whatever. Yeah, wondered how somebody that was so in your corner could then turn and get crazy with you. And you're like, where in the world did all of this crazy come from? It's maybe because they're having a David moment. Because the truth is, they don't want you to know they made a mistake. The truth is, they don't want you to know that they betrayed you. And so rather than tell you the truth, they just murder you. With their, with their mouths. Like the mafia. Just murder you with my mouth. Take you out. Watch this. You still here? David, in this situation, could have finally handled his rejection by simply having a conversation with Uriah and saying, you know what? The other day, whoop de boom But he didn't do it. He could have went to the prophet. He could have went to the man of God. He said, man of God, this is what's happening. I need your help. He didn't do it. He could have had a conversation with himself and said, I got a rejection thing going. Because even though I'm the king and all these people come and go at my bidding and, and people do this and people do that, I am still dealing with rejection. Even though I'm King David and I got money, I got money now. Back then they wouldn't want me, but now I'm hot, they all want me. I got money now! I'm rolling to the bank now. But he was still struggling with rejection. I got crowns of gold. It's like coming to America. I have people that bathe me. Oh, God, I forgot. Denver, that's a movie that came out. Eddie Murphy was in it. Arsenio Hall came out, I think, 88, 89. Prince Hakeem was the heir to the throne of Zamunda. Y'all still ain't with me? Some of y'all like, I don't know what he's talking about. Um, <laughs> Netflix. <coughs> She's your queen to be here. <laughs> I ain't singing that, though. I ain't singing that. I ain't singing that. <laughs> Y'all are missing the point. No amount of stuff could ever give him the acceptance he wanted. No, no, no amount of stuff you've ever given him. So King David deals with rejection. Y'all still here? So now, here's the deal. That was point one. Rejection is a part of life. Isn't that something? Guess what? Full that you sometimes want to accept you, won't. People that you want to sometimes be there with you and be there for you, won't. The quicker you come to that realization, the faster we can move it forward. Bishop, I don't know, they, I don't know why they did that to me. I, you know what? They probably don't know either. Truth is, they probably were doing point number two, which is this. Rejected people preemptively reject rejected people preemptively reject <clears throat> let me prove it to you you ever been not performing well at a job and before they could fire you you quit that's preemptive rejection you were scared they were going to fire you so you figured I'll get to them first it's quiet in this church I mean it's so quiet in this church it's the most quiet I've never heard this church You're like, well, just in case they're ready to put me out, I'm going to quit. Uh, no, seven months ago, seven months ago, somebody was uh, talking with me, and they said, <coughs> Bishop, I made this mistake on my job, and uh, they were talking, 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 and they said, so, you know, I, I just knew they were probably going to fire me because they said they wanted to have a meeting, and so I, I just quit. I said, watch this. See, th that's what guilt will do to you. You didn't know what the meeting was about. So you didn't sat up here and you quit the best paying job you ever had 
so you could preemptively reject so you wouldn't be rejected. See, rejection makes you a little leaky headish. Translation, do things that make no sense. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> watch this, watch this. Y'all still here? You ever done this? You didn't call somebody because you figured they wouldn't answer? Well, I'm not calling them because I know they ain't going to answer. Preemptive rejection. You figure before I have to live through ring, 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 ring and talking to that lady. And the voicemail box you have reached. I just won't call. Before I send an email to apologize because you were wrong. I know they probably ain't going to receive it. So I'm just not going to send it. Because they're probably going to be mad. You preemptively rejected. Okay, it's quiet in this church. Preemptive rejection tries to prevent what probably will never happen. Okay, let me take it another further. This, this, is, this, is, this is, you ready for this? Okay, because we're going to break something off of you today that, 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 that if you don't do it, your neighbor does. And so we're going to get your neighbor delivered today. You ready? Preemptive rejection makes people runners. You know runners, and, and if you don't know one, it's because you're the one. Runners figure, let me get as far away from this as I can because I don't want to have to deal with the pain of rejection. So watch this. They've been rejected, so now they reject, so they won't feel rejection, yet they perpetuate the cycle of rejection because they sowed a seed of rejection. And the book says that when you sow, you got to reap. And since you rejected, God says, well, you're going to have to reap this thing. And when they do it to you, it's going to hurt like, woo! Third Sunday. Anybody know a runner? Now, some of y'all ain't raising your hands for nothing. Now, I, listen, this is a participatory church. I'm sitting there looking at me. I said, do you know a runner? Now, if you don't know a runner, then you the one. So then that means everybody know a runner. <laughs> Anytime something looks hard, preemptive, rejected people, run from it. Oh, that's a lot of work. I can't do it. <laughs> That's too much responsibility. I can't do it. Watch this. I'm not ready for all that. I can't do it. Well, when you going to be ready? When are you going to man up? When are you going to woman up? What day is that going to be? Because as long as you keep running, you're never going to be ready. <laughs> Y'all still here? I'm almost through. I know some of y'all, yeah, I know. Like, when is he going to be done? <laughs> See, because here's the deal. You've been saying, God, nothing's working. God says, because you ran from everything that I sent to you that was going to work. <laughs> so what you did is you ran from the promised land to go get back with Egypt. And I realize sometimes new construction is easier than renovation. But you better understand that new construction still got you on it. Lord, where's my chance going to come? God says, you ran from them all. <laughs> what do you mean, when is it going to come? You ran from them. I gave you opportunity after opportunity. I opened door after door. I sent you grace. I sent you mercy. I sent you goodness. I sent you some more mercy. Then I sent you favor. Then I sent the blessing. Then I sent the kingdom. I didn't send you everything, but you keep running. Some of y'all sitting up here know that you're supposed to be doing more. In me okay, I'm feeling metal now. You know you're supposed to be doing more, but you come and sit and take up a seat thinking, well, bless God, I'm at church. But you know you're supposed to be doing more, but you're a runner. Oh, that's going to require accountability? Ooh, I can't do that. That's going to require an extra 30 minutes a week. I can't do that. Uh -huh. 
I, I know it's a little rough, but if it's your first time, I'm just trying to break the runner. Because you know how you have to break the runner? You have to kill him. No, that's, that's the only way to break it. You have to kill him. So you know how you break the runner? You say, you're not running no more. Shut the door and deal with it. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You don't get to not talk about it no more. Shut the door and deal with it. I don't get to brush this under the rug. Shut the door and deal. I just need to know if I got a church full of folk that say that runner's going to be broke out of me. I'm going to deal with it. Have have somebody say, deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. The only way you get rid of that runner is you make them deal. So when it hurts, I got to deal with it. When I'm crying, I got to deal with it. When I don't feel like talking about it, I got to deal with it. Because when you've been rejected, I'm almost a, you, you have a seed of rejection that creates a belief. Here's what you need to understand about belief. Belief is so powerful that it often disregards truth. You, you ever, okay, now I'm going to really, <laughs> he's like, Bishop is real, Bishop is real. Okay, it's going to get real, real. You, you ever been trying to tell somebody, hey, who you with is no good? I know they no good because I know they no good. But have they, you ever been trying to 